1 Samuel chapter 25, we're continuing our series uh, through the life of David, a man after God's own heart. We see several turning points in the life of David here in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Many years ago uh, in his life, David had been a young shepherd boy when he met a prophet of Israel named Samuel. A prophet would speak the word of the Lord to people. He would speak the word of the Lord. But then it says in 1 Samuel 25, verses 1 and 2, Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him. And they buried, they, they, they buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David moved down into the desert of Paran. So the prophet of God has now died, and David moves his men into the desert. Samuel uh, never saw David take the throne. Think about that. He had, he had actually spoken uh, to David and said, you're going to be the king. But Samuel never saw it happen. He never actually saw it happen. That's hard. Sometimes we pray for things for years and we don't see them happen, right? And we long for those things to happen, and they never seem to quite happen. And Samuel, he never saw the day that David would become king. That's hard. But he trusted God. And he did God's will right to the end. And I'm sure David was mourning for Samuel. He waited all those years. Watching, watching Saul squander what God had given him. But Samuel believed. He knew David would one day become king. I'm sure David mourned the loss. I even wonder, brothers and sisters, if he snuck into uh, the funeral for Samuel and watched him, watched him uh, Watch that in, in, with, with tears in his eyes. You ever lost someone you loved at the funeral? You ever watched someone pass? That's tough. It's a turning point in your life, isn't it? When we lose someone we love. So Samuel passes. What a, I mean, the book we're studying from is 1 Samuel. 1 and 2 Samuel is the life of David. This is an honorable man who passed, man of God. David then headed off into the desert with his 600 men. David is a rebel. He's not a rebel, but he's, he's, a, he's got his band of outcasts, right? He's got his gang of outcasts. 600 men in the desert of Paran. But the next phase of his journey was about to begin. Next, we're going to see uh, an incident that occurs between David and a man named Nabal. Nabal. I don't know if I'm, if I'm saying that right, but between David and Nabal. The scriptures say in 1 Samuel 25, verses 2 and 3, a certain man in Maon who had property there at Carmel was very wealthy. So you got a rich guy. He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. His name was Nabal, and his wife's name was Abigail. She was an intelligent and beautiful woman, but her husband was surly and mean in his, de in his dealings. He was a Calebite. Nabal and Abigail. Nabal and Abigail. Nabal is a mean guy. Negative, harsh. We've all known men like that, right? You ever, you ever had a man in your life who was uh, mean, harsh, rude? Kind of a jerk? Kind of abrupt? Yeah? Can anyone relate? Had someone harsh in your life? Mean-spirited? Just wanted to yell at you? <laughs> See, we've all had someone in our lives like that, right? Someone who's a little mean, a little harsh, and that's Nabal. 
But, but he's married, oddly enough, to this beautiful, intelligent woman named Abigail. So he's this, he's this rude, kind of mean guy. He's kind of harsh and just kind of barks at you. And he's, but he's married to this beautiful woman named Abigail who's intelligent. She, she's got wisdom. Abigail is a smart, beautiful woman. She hasn't let her beauty go to her head, though. She's not become arrogant in her beauty. She's stayed humble and wise in her beauty. That's rare. That's rare. Do you know what the name Nabal means? Literally means fool. That's what it's, so if you're, if you're thinking about naming one of your sons, I wouldn't go for Nabal. It means fool. So some people think maybe this was a nickname that people called him by, but maybe it was actually his given name and his parents didn't even realize, but God was lying it up because this guy was going to be a fool, <laughs> unfortunately. It seems to fit him well, though. He's stubborn and he doesn't listen, as we'll see in a moment. He's stubborn and he doesn't listen. Have you known people like that? Whoa, I almost fell over. Almost, almost rolled my ankle. Almost rolled my ankle there. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if the Holy Spirit's going to make me trip, though, you know? <laughs> Maybe the fire kept me standing, so we'll go with that. Um, he's stubborn, doesn't listen. We've all known people like that. You try to tell them something simple, and they just won't listen. It's like, can you just listen? I'm trying to explain to you something simple here. Just get it. And the guy, and, and the guy or girl will not. It, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not listening. I remember, well, I'm not going to tell that story. Uh, <laughs> David has been a help to Nabal in the past, though. So the, the connection here is that during, uh, I'm assuming it was maybe raised by the Philistines, but uh, David and his 600 men were protecting Nabal's fields and his sheep. So now David is in need, and he sends, it says in verses 4 through 6, David was in the wilderness. He heard that Nabal was shearing sheep. So he sent 10 young men and said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel and greet him in my name. Say to him, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. David orders his men uh, to be very polite and respectful to Nabal in seeking his help. And as well, he's kind of a harsh guy. Let's be real polite to him, be nice to him. And, and so he's seeking help. He sends messengers to connect with him, uh, to start things off on the right foot. Then in verses 7 through 9, uh, the message continues. Now I heard that it is sheep shearing time. When your shepherds were with us, uh, we did not mistreat them. And the whole time they were at Carmel, nothing of theirs was missing. So my troops protected your sheep sheep. We never stole anything from you. Now we need some help. And it says, ask your own servants and they will tell you. Therefore, be favorable toward my men since we come at a festive time. Please give your servants and your son David whatever you can find for them. So he's saying, we need some food. We need some provisions. Please help us, Nabal. When David's men arrived, they gave Nabal this message in David's name. Then they waited. So David's looking for supplies. Let's see Nabal's response in verses 10 and 11. Nabal says, uh, he says, who is this David? Who is this son of Jesse? I don't know this guy. What, who is he? Gosh, this just sounds like a few people I've known in my life who are a little harsh, you know? Who is, I don't know who that is. Who, who? Who is this son of Jesse? He says, many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. He says, oh, this happens all the time with, with this kind of thing, you know? Everybody does this. Why should I take my bread and water and then the meat I have slaughtered for my shears and give it to men coming from who knows where? I don't know where he's from. Who is, who is he? And who is this guy? Why should I give him anything? Nabal's response, so he sends him away and he said, get out of here. Get lost. I don't know any David. I don't know. Uh, where, where are you even from? It, many young men are, are breaking away from their match. Like, who, who knows? Get out of here. Nabal's response is rude, harsh. Who are you? I don't know who you are. Many people are rebelling against their masters. How, why should I give my food and drink to random people in the desert anyway? It's like, dude, these guys have been protecting your flocks for the past few months. Maybe you remember that part? Apparently not. He doesn't remember. Um, very worldly response. I'm not helping anybody. What's mine is mine, and that's all. Mm. You know, if Nabal was wise, he would know. This is the king of Israel. He's, he's in exile. I get it. Saul's still officially king, but man, if you have some wisdom, you're going to see something's going on here, but Nabal does not see 
He's a fool. So he makes some smart remarks. He insults David and sends him away with, with nothing. Let's see what happens next. In verses 12 and 13, David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported every word. David said to his men, each of you strap on your sword. We're going back. <laughs> so David is mad. He says, all right, strap on your swords. We helped this guy for months, and he turns us away empty-handed. So they did, and David strapped his own sword on as well. He, and he says, okay, I'm going to take 400 guys with me, 200 stay back to guard the supplies. Off they go, 400 men. David is angry. Brothers and sisters, here's, here's something to take from this message. Watch your words carefully. Watch your words. Watch your words. The tone of your voice. You can make enemies very quickly by what you say. By how you say it. Wait a minute before you speak. Be cautious. Your words have power. Be careful what you post on social media. Be careful what you post on social media. Make sure it's edifying, valuable, holy, good, because your words can often come back to bite you. Time and again in the book of Proverbs, it talks about watching your words. But have a timely word, too. Speak at the right moment. Remember, that point number one today, watch your words. They have power. Meanwhile, the employees of Nabal say how he mistreated David's men. It says in verses 14 through 17, one of the servants told Abigail, so Nabal's wife, she runs to her because she knows uh, Nabal's not going to listen. And, and she says to, to Abigail, uh, David sent messengers from the wilderness to give our master his greetings, but he hurled insults at them. Yet these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us the whole time we were out in the field near them. Nothing was missing. Night and day they were a wall around us the whole time we were herding our sheep near them. Now think it over and see what you can do because disaster is hanging over our master and his whole household. He is such a wicked man that no one can talk to him. So David's men had apparently been protecting their flocks. Never stole anything. But now, uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you, you, you can tell disaster is coming. There's, there's a problem coming. We got an issue here. Ever felt disaster, almost the fire licking close to you? Yeah. And, and the, the, I'm sure Abigail is feeling this. There's a problem. Ah, disaster is coming. She can sense David's men approaching. You know, she may not know they're coming, but she can feel it in her bones. I don't know if you've ever felt that. I have. Where disaster is lurking. There's a problem here, and we got to solve it fast. Let's see what Abigail does in verses 18 and 19. Abigail acted quickly. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five seas of roasted grain, 100 cakes of raisins, and 200 cakes of pressed figs and loaded them on donkeys. Then she told her servants, go on ahead, I'll follow you. But she did not tell her husband, Nabal. Abigail springs into action. She's going to somehow make things right with David and his men. She loads up the supplies on these donkeys and said, we're going out to meet David. She doesn't come empty handed though. She brings food and drink. She's come with gifts. She's a wise, godly, beautiful woman who is going to somehow make this right. I'm sure this isn't the first time she's had to deal with blowback from Nabal's bad behavior though. You can tell she's already, she's, all right, here we go again. Let's load up the goods and get out there. That's our second point today. Know when you need to spring into action. Take the required action, step up in faith and do so with wisdom. There will be times where God says, stand still and let me handle it. God will do that. Other times you've got to jump forward and take action. Do it now. Take an action. Boom. Do it. Do it. Go. There will be times we've got to discern with wisdom from God. What are the times I've got to stop and let God do something? Okay, God, take over. Do it. Stand still as God. And that's if you look at like Moses in the wilderness with the, the, with the Israelites, there were times where he says, just stand still, everybody. God's going to do it. And there's other times where he says, grab your weapons. We're going to fight and God's going to help us. Okay. Sometimes he calls us to stand still. Sometimes he calls us to grab your weapon and get to work. Okay. You know, we got to discern that. And God is going to give us an indication from the Holy Spirit in us saying, go now and do, do, do this. And you'll know, okay, I need to act now. And, I, and, and then you go do it. 
Other times, the guy will say, stand still. You're good to go now, yeah. Now, what is gonna happen if you get them mixed up? <laughs> That's why you've gotta be prayerful, you gotta be reading the word, you gotta be studying Proverbs and Psalms and uh, the New Testament so you know, because what happens if you say, okay, I, I have to work today from nine to noon. So I'm gonna stand still and let God go to work for me. And I'm gonna stay home and watch TV. I stand still, right? Just like the Bible says, I'm gonna stand still. That's not gonna end well. You didn't show up to work. <laughs> you, you now have lost your job. <laughs> and on, on the other hand, what happens when uh, God is telling you to stand still while I deal with the situation? And you think, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go try to solve it with my, myself and my own power. And then God's like, oh, you, you went the wrong way. You should have listened and stood still. So discern that. Okay, next. In verses 20 through 30, just listen to the word here. It says, as she came, so she's got her, her, her food and stuff, she came riding with a donkey into a mountain ravine. There were David and his men descending toward her, and she met them. So you got 400 guys, swords ready, marching through this ravine, and there's Abigail on her donkey marching toward them. And then probably, oh boy. <laughs> Because David is hot with rage. Says as she comes riding, there was David. David had just said, it's been useless. All my watching over this fellow's property in the wilderness. So that none of it was missing. He has paid me back evil for good. May God deal with David, be it ever so severely. If my morning I leave alive one male of all who belong to him. When, Ab when Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey. Bowed down before David with her face to the ground. She fell at his feet my Lord, and she and said, pardon your servant, my Lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Please pay no attention, my Lord, to that wicked man, Nabal, my husband. <laughs> pay no attention. He is just like his name. His name means fool and folly goes with him. And as for me, your servant, I did not see the men my Lord sent. I didn't see those guys that you sent. I would have talked to them. And now, my Lord, please, he, she says, as surely as the Lord your God lives and as you live, since the Lord has kept you from bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hands, may your enemies and all who are intent on harming my Lord be like Nabal. And let this gift which your servant has brought to my Lord be given to the men who follow you. Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord your God will certainly make a lasting dynasty for you because you fight the Lord's battles and no wrongdoing will be found in you as long as you live. Even though someone is pursuing you to take your life, the life of my Lord will be bound securely in the bundle of the living by the Lord your God. But the lives of your enemies will, will be hurled away as from the pocket of a sling. And the Lord has fulfilled for my Lord every good thing he promised concerning him. And has appointed him ruler over Israel, my Lord will not have on his conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or of having avenged himself. He's saying, don't avenge yourself. Let God be the avenger. And when the Lord your God has brought my Lord's success, remember your servant. Abigail's gracious and humble words turn back David's wrath. Abigail speaks truth, speaks life over David. She says what Nabal should have said. Her words are matched by the food and drink she brings as well. She humbly asks for mercy from David and his men. Third point today, speak gracious words. These gracious words turn back the wrath of David and his men. Be, if you're prideful or, or, or harsh about it, or manipulative about it, obviously it's not going to turn out like this. But if you humble yourself, speak gracious words, and speak life, you'll find reconciliation. Yeah, humbly. In verses 32 through 35, it says, David said to Abigail, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. So his response is very gracious, praise the Lord to Abigail. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Otherwise, as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, who has kept me from harming you, if you had not come quickly to meet me, not one male belonging to to Nabal would have been left alive by daybreak. He says, oh good, you helped me here, Abigail. You helped me turn away from my wrath because I was about to kill. And you helped me to turn away from that and to put it in God's hands again. We should never, never try to avenge ourselves, but give it to God and he'll avenge us worse to our enemies than we could imagine, or he'll show them grace, whatever, it, whatever is needed in that situation. 
Point number four, David gives God the glory. Abigail did all the right things here, but it was ultimately God who gave the victory. Guess what? In life, you can do all the right things like Abigail does here, and it can still go the wrong direction. So it's God in this situation that gives the victory in the end. It is not really Abigail. Abigail does all the right things, true, but it is ultimately God who grants the victory here in this situation. Next, in verses 36 through 39, when Abigail went to Nabal, he was in the house holding a banquet. So everything gets worked out. Abigail leaves. She goes to find Nabal. And it says Nabal was in the house holding a banquet like that of a king. So he's throwing a huge party for himself. <laughs> so she, so he, and he was in high spirits and very drunk. So she told him nothing at all until daybreak. Then in the morning when Nabal was uh, sober, I could say hung over, but it says sober, his wife told him all these things and it says his heart failed him and he became like a stone. So he just, he's shocked. It's like, oh, I almost, I almost got us all killed. And he, he freaks out. It says about 10 days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. So Nabal, boom, he's done. I don't, I don't think he repented. That's, that's why, I mean, he just says like, he doesn't care, you know. He's, he's scared, but he doesn't change his ways. Verse 39, when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, Praise be to the Lord who has upheld my cause against Nabal for treating me with contempt. He has kept his servant from doing wrong and has brought Nabal's wrongdoing down on his own head. That's the truth. So when we let God be the judge, he does judge, okay? He will deal with our enemies and those who harm us. We have to put it in his hands. If we try to avenge ourselves, it's going to be a disaster. It's not going to work out right. So we have to let God be the judge. And he judges our enemies. He will deal with them. He struck Nabal dead here. So you should fear the Lord <laughs> if, you're, if you're doing wrong, okay? That's why we need to repent quickly if we're doing wrong. God will deal with us. Do, do you fear God today? I do. I fear God. Whenever I sin, and sometimes I do sin, hopefully more and more or less often, I tremble a little bit because I know what God will do. He is not Mr. Rogers. He is serious about his people. And if we live in sin, we're going to face the wrath, okay? That's real. He loves us, okay? Don't get confused here. He loves us so much. But he cannot deal with sin. Sin is a disease on this planet. It is destroying it. It leads to things like human trafficking, sex slavery, horrible things. So he's got to deal with it. And if we're living in sin, that's, that's a danger. That's, we're living in the problem then. And God's going to have to deal with that problem, and that will include us if we're living in it. Just be aware of that. God's serious. And honestly, that, that's so helpful to me when I consider the fear of God because it drives me away from evil. I was going to realize, okay, I need to take this stuff seriously. I need to repent real quick here, and then I do, and everything's good. But sometimes I need to see that, sh that, that saber a little bit. <laughs> so I'm a little stubborn sometimes, and I think, well, God loves me. It's fine. Hold on a minute. <laughs> uh, it, he does love me, but, yeah, he, he's going to deal with sin. So I need to repent real quick. Let that, that's, a, that's been a gift in my life, like nothing I can imagine. I know it sounds weird, the fear of the Lord. As Americans, we think, oh, fear's bad. Well, not always. Sometimes I do need to tremble a little bit before God. It helps me stay on the straight and narrow. So take that gift with you tonight of the fear of the Lord, okay? And also, point number five, let God deal with your enemies. Plain and simple. So how does it end here? Now Abigail doesn't have a husband. That's a problem for her. Her husband died. Just, just, just done. Boom. He's dead. And in ancient times, men were, were the landowners. Women's, women had very few rights back, back in ancient Israel. So it says in verses 39 to 44, Then David sent word to Abigail, asking her to become his wife. His servant went to Carmel and said to Abigail, David has sent us to you to take you to become his wife. She bowed down with her face to the ground and said, I am your servant and am ready to serve you and wash the feet of my Lord's servants. 
Abigail quickly got on the donkey and attended by her five female servants, went with David's messengers and became his wife. David had also married a Hinoam of Jezreel and they both were his wives. He's got two wives now. It's not a good thing, but there it is. But Saul had given his daughter Michal, David's wife, to Peltiel, son of Laish, who was from Galim. So David's wife, Michal, who, who had been, he'd been married to with, with, uh, under Saul, King Saul, was given away to another person, apparently. So there's that, too. So Abigail goes from being saddled with Nabal, always having troubles, to taking a new course of action, and she now joins up with David's army. She becomes his wife and a blessing to his troops and men. She becomes an honored woman in his affairs. So point number six today, God provides for those he loves. He makes sure that Abigail has someone to care for her, David and his troops. And he also provides for David this relationship with Abigail. And not only that, God provides food and drink for David and his men after all this. That, the food and drink that went through Abigail. Pretty cool. So that's point number six. God provides food and drink for his people. Point number seven is he provides us marriage as well to care for Abigail and for David. And that is how the situation ends. We go from Samuel dying, this great prophet, to David being with Abigail and ha having food for his men. God cares for them and provides. To summarize, point number one, Watch your words. Point number two, jump into action when, when the moment calls for it. Point number three, speak humble, gracious words to turn away offense. Point number four, give God all the glory. He guides events, not our wisdom. Point number five, let God deal with your enemies. He certainly will. Point number six, God provides food and drink to his, the ones he loves. Point number seven, he provides romance and marriage as well. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Jesus loves you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this uh, historical series of events with Nabal and Abigail and David. Please teach us uh, more about you through all this, God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.